can't tell you how happy we are that you've decided to join us, Dr. Hartman. Well, I like what I've seen so far. The truth is, I've always been drawn to Los Angeles. With your credentials, I'm sure you had plenty of options. I've been reviewing your patient portfolio. Your work is among the most impressive I've ever seen. I like to say, whoever God didn't get around to creating in his own image, it's our job to recreate in ours. Motion Wanted, an X-Files podcast. I'm Jax, joined as ever by Luke. Luke, how are you today? I'm still inside, so... Uh... <laughs> right, yeah. See, this is the dangerous podcast... This is the dangerous episode, should I say, because this is the one that we're recording two weeks before. So, things could change drastically by the time this one comes yeah. out. Um, so, I thought we could talk about... We've both been inside for the, like the last best part of a week. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Well, um, also, well, before we carry on, because two weeks ago um, was the episode where we mentioned that we both went to see Book of Mormon. Good points. Very good points. <laughs> we we didn't even go into what we thought, what, anything about it, because quite frankly, there were bigger things going on. <laughs> That's, <like laughs> That's a very good point. Well... Why don't you take the lead on this one? Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, obviously, we both went on um, Friday the something. I can't even remember now. Times. Oh. First. What's that, sorry? I've got a feeling it was the first or the sixth. One mm, of the two. Something like that, yeah. I think it was the sixth. Um, but, yeah, anyway, um, we both went to see it. Um, I absolutely loved it. I, yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I've always liked, like, safe park stuff anyway, so... Um, but yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be as um, raw as it was. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I thought to say I, I absolutely adored it. It was great. To be honest, I just love musical theatre, though. I really do. Have you seen, um, during this whole um, like coronavirus outbreak, um, Wind in the Willows um, production in London, um, they are obviously all the theatres are closed down now, but they're streaming their um, performances. Oh, really? For anyone in the UK, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, no, I didn't even know that. Like, for a fee, I'm assuming. No, no, for free. For free, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I do love, like, one thing about this um this whole virus thing, I do love, like, these little sort of nuggets of stories that you come out of, just like, you realise there's, there's definitely good in the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do, t- I, I seem to be reading a lot more stories of people doing nice things and helping each other than people who are hoarding toilet roll and hand sanitizers yeah. you know what I mean like there's still dickheads out there but th- th- uh, there's a lot more non shitheads than shitheads as we've we've I established so. couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah what have you been doing to waste the time to keep yourself active whilst quarantined away I- I've still been working like uh, my work is quite easy to do working from home so it's sort of not it's not really affected me too much in terms of in yeah in terms of um, working, but I know it's a lot harder for other people out there. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I've still been working. And other than that, to be honest, I've just been again, I'm going to mention this <laughs> three times in, in one recording session, obviously it's two weeks, but I've been doing a shitload of Warhammer stuff because it is the perfect quarantine hobby. You just basically, you don't need internet connection, you don't need anything else, it's like, okay, I've got my stuff, I build it, paint it, done. The only annoying thing is again, once it's done, I'm like, I know what to play with now. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is the top of them, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been pretty much the same, to be honest. I've been, um, again, I, I'm, I'm lucky and I'm privileged privileged enough to be able to work from home. Um, so work-wise, I haven't been affected that much. Um, and with regards to my spare time, we're, we're, we're putting like little rules in our household now, mm. me, me and Jem. So we're trying to put time aside for events what we don't want is we don't want days to just sort of start blending into like this just one droll affair. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So like rather than just sort of sat in front of the telly just constantly, we'll put a night aside and say, right, this is movie night. Yeah. And we'll make a 
big we'll make a big deal of it do you know what i mean rather than just any other night where you just plastic stick a film on yeah. let's make a big deal out of it let's let's choose two films we really want to watch we'll just sit down we'll get snacks and we'll make a big deal out of it you know what i mean and stuff like that we're gonna i think we're gonna play board game night over the weekend and we're just trying to break the, the two weeks up because i think it, it can be a little bit dangerous for your for your mental well-being to just blur everything into one long two-week period you know what i mean yeah that's i've seen a lot of people do stuff like that like um i follow somebody on instagram and their family have basically been um they've set out like um something with their kids and they're basically so one day is their star wars day and they've had a disney princess day where they all try and because all the kids are off as well you know what i mean so it's like yeah it's like entertaining the kids as well which we don't have to worry about i suppose but yeah people who've got kids have got to contend with that as well so yeah, but um, yeah, I, I think that's a, a sensible thing to do. Of sort of like try and yeah, vary it up, I suppose. And keep doing different yeah, things. Be creative about it as well, and I, I think I think it's important. Like I know, like it's not as big a deal as like you don't want to make into like more than it is. But I also do very much appreciate that there are people out there, especially people who uh, maybe suffer with anxiety or suffer with depression maybe there are people out there that aren't as well equipped to deal with a two-week isolation period do you know what i mean Um, and even for even for like if you if you think you're a perfectly healthy person or you know mentally healthy i suppose um it can still be quite a a depressing time or Mm. quite a a strenuous time on your on your your mental well-being so i do think even though like it seems a little bit cheesy. Some of these tips that you keep reading on Facebook and online are very sensible tips. Stuff like separating your workspace from your day-to-day life, getting dressed in the morning. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just these little things, although they seem trivial, I do think they are important to do, especially and especially for people who um, aren't as well in day-to-day life, or yeah, don't, yeah. don't deal with day-to-day life as well. You know what I mean? Or not. That sounds bad, but you know, you get what I'm trying to say. Mm, yeah, but it's um, like I said, it's just one of those things that I, I feel like the first few the first few weeks are where it's sort of going to be the hardest, and like if you have to do it for any longer than that, like depending on what the situation is like after two weeks, I think then it'll sort of be like, okay, I know what to, I'm getting myself in for then, and yeah, you can sort of just go through the motions, I suppose. <laughs> I will say this again though, it just feels crazy that in 2020 this. This is happening. Do you know what I mean? It just, it just, it's mad that like everyone's stuck in their homes and yeah, yeah. just feels really strange. It doesn't. It feels surreal, but also in a in a weird way, it also feels very normal. Which yeah, is yeah. Mind boggling to me. There's a. It, it sort of to me it proves that, and we always we get this every now and again, but it's sort of localized. Like when there's an earthquake or if there's been a tsunami, or something, you go, "Oh, it's terrible. Look what nature's done." It. I think this is very much. Something showing us that, yeah, just just because we think we're in charge of stuff, nature can come along and ruin everything. <laughs> oh yeah, without a doubt. So, without yeah. a doubt. So yeah, but but, it, it gets, but it also puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've I've noticed. Um, it, it it seems I because I deal like with IT t- uh, support tickets and stuff like that. We've had barely any um late lately. I'm still working on like some, um, but I, I get the feeling people are realizing. It doesn't matter at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Well, one thing I wanted to, did want to bring up um, before we get into this episode is um, I'm very, very much missing my football. That's one yes. of the things I'm really, I just, I didn't realize how much I needed it until it was taken away. Um, and so I've, I've been looking for a fix. I've been looking for that sort of competitive fix in my life. Oh, yeah. But of course, there's no other sport to jump to. So I've really got into marble racing in a <laughs> real big way. There's there's co- quite a few YouTube channels that do it, and you just pick your favourite and you let these marbles run down this big sand dune. And I've never been into, more into something in my life. I mean, I, I'm re- I always root for the turquoise one. Can't can't wait for them to win one day. I mean, that's definitely something you could simulate at home. You and Jim get some like um, your Hot Wheels tracks. Get some of those. Get some marbles. Yeah. There you go. One house. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine it like, um, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the, the Kids and stuff like that. He's just going to be like that. <laughs> That'd be great. I could, I could live stream it. Everyone can get behind it, place the bets. 
Well, uh, there we go. On that note, I mean, where do we go from marbles to murders, I guess? I don't know. Uh, we're not going to get any better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. So this week, we'll be looking at episode six of season four, entitled Sanguinarium. Um, originally aired on November 10th, 1996. Um Written by Vivian Mayhew and Valerie Mayhew, mm. directed by Kim Manners. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a new writing team, I suppose, there. So um, I've not seen these names before. It's, it, I'm wondering if it's like a, a husband and wife writer or something like that. It's two women, isn't it? Well, I suppose Vivian, Vivian can Vivian, be the guy's name. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I assume Vivian was the, was the guy's name, but yeah, it might be. I'm not sure. Let's check this out. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't really help. I've gone onto his Wikipedia page and it says Vivian Mayhew is a writer who worked on the X Files. <laughs> doesn't help us at all. Yeah, so maybe, we... maybe the husband and wife, maybe the brother and sister, maybe the sister and sister, maybe the wife and wife. Who knows? Who knows? That maybe they're just friends. <laughs> they just happen to have the same last name. Yeah, <laughs> it can happen. It can happen. Mayhew is quite a popular name. Um, so. I'll caveat this whole episode. I did all did do this last week by saying I'm working without notes. Um, due to circumstances, I've got to use my phone to Skype record, so I can't I can't easily access the notes on my phone. I don't have a com- I don't have the computer available to me, so this could get messy. Last week you was running the show, so it was kind of easy to get past. I mean, I, this I... week. It's pretty difficult. I have the script as well, so if, if we miss anything, don't worry, I've still got stuff there. Well, the way I see it is, again, we're doing this on the fly anyway. We know we knew these episodes were going to be a little bit of a hodgepodge job, if you like. So as long as we get the main story down, we can still talk about what's going on. But we don't have to go through every little detail. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm using Wikipedia, and um, it starts off with a line, everyone wants to be beautiful. And so I'm worried about this this Wikipedia's entry now. <laughs> yeah, every, everyone wants to be beautiful. It doesn't start <laughs> like that. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember that at the beginning. I know they mentioned that, but I don't remember that at the beginning. Yeah, they've kind of dramatised the summary, which isn't helpful no, for me. Not, that's, that's not good. <laughs> um, I, I know the first scene was them at the surgery, wasn't it? So we start off um, at a hospital in Winnetka, Illinois. Is it Winnet- Winnetka? Winnetka? Win- Winnetka. Uh, is it? I'm going to say Winnetka. It says here Winnetka. Chicago. <laughs> what? It says in my notes Chicago. It says on Wikipedia Winnetka. Maybe Winnetka's in Chicago. Maybe, maybe. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't expect this to be really a, like it's the first sentence. <laughs> um, yeah, let's move far. It, Winnetka is a village in Cook County, Illinois, north of downtown Chicago. Uh, close so, enough. I would say, I mean, if anything, I've been too precise. <laughs> well, there you go. So we start off um, at this um, like clinic, if you like, and we see um, a nurse getting the surgeon prepped, um, and he seems to be distracted, and she's basically saying, you've got these patients left. He tells her to get all the patients set up. He's got a, a routine liposuction um, planned, and so the nurse is just running through with the patient, telling her she's going to be okay. And then the, the doctor seems distracted. He's washing his hands. I couldn't... And then the camera pans to his hands, and I couldn't tell whether he was rubbing them so hard that he was making his hand, own hands bleed or whether he just had blood on his hands and he was washing them off. Yeah. I, I think it's implied that he was like rubbing them so hard they bled. Is that... I, I yeah. think that's what the implication was. This just... I felt like... Uh, uh, trust it to be at this time of the year that we're covering an episode where a guy's furiously washing his hands. <laughs> Have you been singing happy birthday as you wash your hands? I sort of, I, I don't, I sort of count really slowly because I know seconds are slower than you sort of imagine. You know what I mean? When you count only get one, two, three, four, that's way too quick for second. So I just sort of, I just, I, to be honest, I take forever washing my hands anyway because I'm just daydreaming. So I, <laughs> that does it for me. <laughs> That's your time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I, we, um, I, I did like this setup as well. The very beginning, 
the um, <laughs> the nurse says to Orman, don't worry, there's nothing to worry about, everything's going to be fine. To in- initially, I was like, well, she's going to die, straight up. It, it was like yeah. an episode of Casualty. She turns around to him, I think, and says something along the lines of, he's done this procedure a thousand times. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's, you, she's doomed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we see this, um, the doctor, he tells the nurse to go and get the other patients prepped. Um, and then we cut to the doctor performing the liposuction surgery, or operation, I keep calling it surgery, sorry, the operation. And he seems to be doing it a little bit too furiously. But he's, you know, he's, he's, he's doing his job. He's doing it quick, maybe. And then <laughs> we quick. notice, and it, we, the camera pans to the fact that it doesn't seem right. This patient doesn't seem like the one that we saw at the beginning. And then it becomes quite clear that the patient is an old man. And he keeps doing it, keeps going, keeps sucking all the fat out, right up until the point where he's actually sucking up just pure blood and guts. Mm. At this point, the nurse outside realizes what's going on, realizes the switch, and starts panicking and screaming and calling for help. Yeah. yeah as soon as you see the red going in the tube, you go, oh, this is bad. Yeah. yeah. This is quite a gory episode. To be fair, there's a few shots in this episode where it can get... I was like, bloody yeah, I didn't expect that. The... There's a bit later on with the um, the chemical face peel. And I was like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's another bit, I'll, I'll, I won't say it now, I'll get to it, but it really shocked me. I don't know why, but I'll, I'll get to that. I, I think I, know, I think I rem- remember which... Uh, but I think I know which one it's going to be, but yeah, carry on. See? Um, so yeah, after the intro, following all this, um, with the Dr. Harrison Lloyd, the Dr. Harrison Lloyd, um, he's telling his... Um, experience to um, Mulder and he tells them that he doesn't even remember doing it he all he can well he does remember doing it but all he can describe it as is like an out of body experience where he was watching himself do it but couldn't stop himself um, Scully is skeptical about it all um, and, and she claims that basically he's only doing it to get away with it he's doing it so in a court of law it's not admissible yeah I, I did like in this part that um, Mulder uh, he, this this guy sort of says, "Is there anything? Uh, well, what could this be? What else could would you call it?" And Mulder goes, "Spirit possession or demon possession?" And it pans to Scully, who rolls her eyes, and it's like <laughs> st- st- straight off the bat, annoyed. <laughs> it does feel weird that he gives, he puts those ideas in people's heads beforehand. Like you'd think someone who was so desperate to get proof of paranormal activity, you'd think the first rule of thumb would be not to lead them down that alley. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Because at that point, if they went down that alley, it doesn't prove anything. All it proves is they've just taken your lead and gone with it. Yeah, I. Yeah, it, it always, he always seems quite eager to push that narrative, and it's like, yeah, maybe pump the brakes on that a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, again, I'm probably going to skip quite quickly forward through it. Um, we go with Mulder and Scully to inspect the operation room. Um, and before long, they discover um, five scorch marks in the floor. Yeah. And, I mean, well, it's it's the crime scene, isn't it? And there's still blood on the floor, and Mulder just callously uses the blood to draw a pentagon yeah. in the five scorch marks. Yeah. I just As soon as he did this, I just put in capital letters, the devil! <laughs> That's how it came out. There's a few bits in this. I like when uh, Mulder walks in as well, and... Um, I can't remember the line, but uh, Scully's um, talking to him about something, and he walks past a nurse and basically pervs on her and just goes, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that bit. It, it's like right as they walk in to this place before he starts carving in blood. There is a, there's a, a quite a few um, side stories in this. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't know whether I'm... like uh, Maybe I, I picked up on it wrong. Because they never mention it, and I don't think it's important to the plot. But did you pick up on the fact that all the way through this episode, Mulder's very self-conscious about the way he looks? Yeah, he keeps like looking at himself in the mirror, doesn't he? Like he spends ages on the program changing his own nose. <laughs> yeah, and then like he's he's, he's seeing like the sort of the crow's feet around his eyes and stuff like mm. that. And I was like, this is a really strange side plot that they never really touch upon. But I think. It- <laughs> Think about getting work done up, I suppose. I think it, the only thing that's there for, to, or the only thing I thought of, was that it's to tr- sort of push this idea of, oh, everybody wants to be be- beautiful, and they're showing, like, Mulder also is, like, even though he's not acting on it, he's sort of... No, keep... it's immune to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, it makes sense. I just thought it was like, uh, to be honest, it's nice character building, isn't it? Mm. Whenever you, if in real life, if you if you, if you had agents following a case, the case isn't the be all and end all. They've all got their own lives, and so I've I've never got a problem with a little bit of extra sort of character building in the middle of it. Yeah, they um, yeah, um, I also thought straight away when you start when you meet this nurse wait and they start talking to her as well. They um. They they kind of lead you straight down one avenue with that straight away. Yeah, I thought at the start she was going to be like the person, like the damsel in distress, the person they try they're trying to help. Mm. Uh, but they they really lead you down the path that she's heavily involved. Don't yeah, they? yeah, exactly. So anyway, yeah, they find this pentagram on the floor, um, which leads more to believe that witchcraft might be involved in one way or the other. And one interesting fact that I do remember from the episode was, and I didn't know this before, that the pentagram isn't a sign of evil. It's a, actually a protection mm. um, from evil. And I never knew that, did you? Um, I think one of our friends told us, Aid, like he meant, he's mentioned it to me before because he's like into his occult stuff and he's done a lot of reading yeah. on it. But I, I, I think he told me before that the pentagram isn't yeah, like a devil sign. It's when it's inverted is what they mentioned later on. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that myself. Although, how can they tell it's inverted on the floor? I don't know. I mean, if I ever saw a pentagram, I wouldn't be thinking, oh, no, that's actually for protection. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some sketches <laughs> going on here. Um, so while this is happening, we see the staff at, um, it was called Lloyd's Clinic. Mm. Um, meanwhile, we see the um, the staff at Lloyd's Clinic, and they're sort of having a boardroom conversation about um, well, about what's going on. This bit confused me throughout the episode, to be honest mm. with me. Yeah, because they make out... I, I thought going through this episode that all of these people were in on it. Yeah, that's... They seem to... The, the way this these, like, sort of bits are filmed... Because it starts off showing you a pentagram on the table. And then yeah. they're all talking about this, like, you know, the past. And I was like, oh, what have these, these guys done then? Are they involved? But yeah, it, it turns out that they're just... They're just trying to save money, or they're just trying to like make money as cheap as possible, basically. I guess so, yeah. But there's a few things they say which indicate that they they're trying to cover things up, which isn't. I suppose, yeah. I suppose it's it's just saving money. Out. That that's bad enough as it is, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we then sadly the second murder takes place, um, and that involves another plastic surgeon, a completely different one, um. Dr. Lacqua? In Lacqua, it... yeah, I thought, yeah. The, yeah. There is a bit before this, just very oh, briefly. I, I, as I say, I'm working off memory. Yeah. Um, we see uh, they're prepping something, and we see this nurse, Nurse Waite, is like putting leeches on somebody's belly. Oh, yes, and, and in, the, in the shape of a pentagon as yeah. well. Yeah, and then after that, there's a bit where in Mulder's hotel room as well, um, where, yeah, we see them. He's sort of looking in the mirror at that point, and they they noticed that um, Doctor Lloyd was taking um, he was taking sleeping pills that had belladonna in it, which is like a witch hex material or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I that... do... oh, this is gonna this is gonna be a nightmare. I'm sorry, Luke. You're gonna be the MVP of this episode. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> but that's all. That's all. Really, so... there's there's not much else in it. It's just just those things. Yeah, so they they sort of they're looking at the medication he's taking, mm-hmm. and um, Mulder does make a, a comment that one of the ingredients of the medication is commonly used in witchcraft ingredients as well. Um, but I think throughout most of this episode, they're sort of the tr- they're, they're leading you down different paths, trying to sort of give you different alternatives, but none of them really lead anywhere, do they? It's more just about the one guy. But yeah, yeah. we'll get yeah. Um, so yeah, the set the second. Um, the patient that had the um, the burns on her, um, on, her, on her stomach where the leeches, well, not the burns, the bruises where the leeches were, she's going to have surgical laser sur- surgery on her eyes. And the doctor goes in, he starts doing it, and it just looks like he's, basically, he just starts doing it on the side of her face. And this is the bit that disturbed me. Yeah. Because yeah. it like, just burning a hole in the side of her face. And then they do this really great shot yeah. from the other side of the bed where the camera pans out and you see him just, again, continuing on this hole. And all of a sudden the laser just starts coming out of the other side of the face. Yeah. And that really sort of, I don't know why, 
That really freaked me out. <laughs> I, I let out let out a proper like, whoa, <laughs> like that when yeah, it yeah. happened. It's horrible the way it's sort of coming out the other side of it. It's really nasty. I suppose it's sort of like the equivalent of having a drill go through. You know what I mean? But it's like in yeah, the... yeah. Uh, more efficient, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, when Scully interviews this doctor later, he has the same story as the um, the other guy that he doesn't really remember. He doesn't. He couldn't stop himself from doing it. He was being controlled. But they do notice that they, he had the same pills as the other Doctor as well. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing as well that they sort of... Anybody who gets sort of possessed, I suppose, or whatever they're, they're going with, it, they get really sweaty. And I don't know, understand what that is. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's them panicking. Yeah. They've got still got sort of conscious, like, viewing of what's going on. You yeah. Know? It's quite easy to go for it. True, true, true. Um, but yeah, obviously Mulder's suspicions are um, confirmed about witchcraft when he looks back at the tape of this second murder and notices the pentagram pattern on the on the, the, the patient's mm. belly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think we have another boardroom scene now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, another one of those. Yeah, and we see the hospital coordinator. Her name's Dr. Teresa Shannon. Um, and she start, she's telling... Well, Mulder and Scully just burst in, basically, as the mid-conference... Um, and she tells Mulder and Scully about a similar series of deaths that occurred at the same hospital 10 years prior. Um, so basically, she's saying, we want to put this behind us once and for all. We don't, we don't need this again. Uh, so, yeah, it would seem not just it, it's not just something happening now. It, it's something that they need to stop before it happens over and over again. Mm, yeah. Um, it, and again, it, it's sort of we don't know how uh, into uh, integral these people are, but yeah, they they definitely got some past in it, and they're not telling every telling them everything. So um, yeah, but again, it's not really explored more about oh how involved are they? Are they they doing something that's is is some of uh, some of the people involved in it? But I mean, yeah, we don't find out until much much later. For me, I was I was convinced that they was involved. I yeah. was convinced that all that boardroom was involved in the killings. I thought yeah. it was like a like a cult kind of thing. Yeah, same. Yeah, it doesn't turn out to be that obviously. And um, they try and pin it on Rebecca Waits and um, the nurse from the beginning, um, saying that she was the only nurse that was there for both ten years ago, and now she transferred away, but she came back, and of course she was present at all the death scenes. Yeah. Um, so Mulder and Scully go to visit her house, and they find probable cause to enter. And I, I did like this—the the broomstick outside. Yeah, they got a laugh. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they find the um, like a little sort of pentagon symbol at the top of the door frame. So they do. They they break the door down, and they find what can only just be described as a witch's haven. Yeah, pretty much. They um. Before they burst in as well, we sort of see what she's doing beforehand, and she's sort of doing this ritual where she's naked and chanting and lighting candles. Um, yeah, we, we don't know what that's leading to, but we see a bit later on maybe what that is. Yeah, exactly. At the same time this is happening, because obviously Mulder and Scully go into the, the, the seeing like the sort of all these different, um, basically, occult material in her house. At the same time, we see um, Dr. Jack Franklin at his house, and he's basically assaulted by Wait, mm-hmm. who is hiding in a tub full of blood. Yeah, I mean, not a very uh, inconspicuous hiding place. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I would certainly go and investigate if my bathtub was filled with blood. Yeah, good. I always like that. Wait. What's that? Sorry. Great visually. Yeah, yeah. It's always a good shot. That is, like, there's there's so many horror films where there's, like, the bath is full of, like, it's always a dark liquid and somebody goes to investigate and someone just bursts out. But it so, always gets a good scare. Exactly, yeah. So she attacks him. They ha- they sort of have this sort of big fight. Um, but eventually he sort of managed to subdue her. <laughs> he bits they- her right in the face. <laughs> he does. He, he does. Like, she's out for the count. And um, when the detectives arrive... They try and interview her, but she begins throwing up drawing pins. Mm-hmm. And I, I, to be fair, I didn't realize it was drawing pins 
until right at the end, because like it was, it was such a dark shot that I couldn't really see what was going on. But yet, she's basically saying to them beforehand that she it's not her, it's him, it's Dr. Jack Franklin they need to be worried about. Mm. But before she could get anything else out, she dies from throwing up these drawing pins. Yeah, they, they say they rush her to hospital, but yeah, she's already dead at the scene, isn't she? Yeah, exactly. So the only place um, Mulder and Scully can go after that is they go to Dr. Jack, Jack Franklin. Basically, they're trying to find out what was her motivation for attacking him. Um, and Franklin, he seems shook. He's in he's, he's in his bedroom, but he doesn't really have anything to to give them. He doesn't really have any information for them. Um, that it was it's him and what was the um, other 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 woman's name? The, the um, other doctor, Doctor Shannon. I can't remember her first name. Yeah, Teresa, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, she's there as well, and she's basically saying we need to put an end to this. Um, let's just get it sorted, and then we can leave it in the past where it belongs. She leaves as as do the agents when he basically says, "I just need some rest." And as they leave, he starts to hover above his bed, very Ghostbusters style. Yeah, it's a bit a bit of a corny shot. I thought this one was. Yeah, it is a little bit. Is it, is... Like, it's almost like directly. I'm guessing Ghostbusters was out at this point, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was the eighties, wasn't it? Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like an exact rip off, to be honest. Yeah. I like I said, I. I... I'd say it's probably the only bit in the episode where I was like, oh, okay, we didn't need that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was on the, very on the nose, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah, that was, that was something else I wanted to mention. When he's um, levitating and he's just like, that weird smile. Like, it's just it's so on the nose. Yeah. It's like, he might as well, yeah, we, we get it, he's evil. He might as well have a devil horns pop out. <laughs> exactly. Um, so... Mulder is starting to investigate further into the murders. And one thing that he notices is that the birthdays of the victims match up with dates of the four witches' Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. Um, So what he's assuming is we can track who the other people are that are going to die based on the the Sabbath days and what patients are coming in with those birthdays. Um, and what he believes is that Wait was actually trying to protect the victims from the Doctor um, because she placed the pentagrams, which, like I said before, are actually protective symbols for him, not evil symbols. Mm-hmm. And then we get this sequence of events where Mulder figures out that, well, if Wait wasn't the killer, then the killer's going to strike again and it's going to be another birthday. So they start cross-referencing um, and they realise that there's another patient coming in on, with, a, with a birthday of one of the Sabbath days, but unfortunately, they're getting prepped right now and they're mm. ready for surgery. So they start rushing off. Meanwhile, at the hospital, like um, I said, they're, get, they're getting prepped for that surgery and another murder takes place. But this time, it's with this sort of, like an acid? I yeah, don't really the- know what this is operate what what procedure they've been they, going for here. They mention it's it's a chemical face peel. So I imagine it's sort oh. of like an acid or something that like you meant to just burn off like a top layer. But I guess if you chuck an entire that... I don't know. I have never I've never seen that before. I've heard the that term. Sounds... Yeah, I d I don't know. I've heard that term before, but I don't know. Well so yeah, but basically if that is the case and that is a real thing I think he left it on a little bit too long. Because <laughs> when the agents get there, the doctor's looking again like he didn't know didn't know what to do. He, he wasn't aware of what's going on. And then we see the patient who is basically just a husk. He's he's just it's all of his feet on his face are completely burnt off. Yeah, down to the bone. Uh, really good gore effect, to be honest. This was like a proper yeah. like it was like a proper. Um, it reminded me of something like. Um, Oh, what's it called? Return of the Living Dead or something like that. Like, it's kind of like over the top, but because it's in this, it's not too much, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I really enjoyed it. And again, as through all the episode, I thought the murder scenes were just graphic enough that it was shocking to you. Yeah, like it mm. did give you that sort of, like almost wanting to sort of retreat vibe. Mm. The One thing I, I did think about whilst watching this bit, though, is a woman's like, oh, is it still okay to do this? And it's like, if there'd been like two murders at this hospital, I wouldn't never go. 
there's not a chance that this hospital stays open after that second murder. <laughs> like, there's no way, like, they get closed down immediately. <laughs> Especially when, like, apparently they're putting all the murders down to accidents. And it's like, yeah, we accidentally burned through this guy's face with a laser. <laughs> like, come on, like, there's no way this stays open. Yeah, um, but hey yo, everybody wants to be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, yeah, that, that is true. It is true. So um, the agents are sort of at a loss. They're, they're waiting for an inevitable fourth victim. Um, they meet again with Teresa Shannon, and she gives them a little bit more information on the murders that happened 10 years ago. And in summary, she tells them five people um, were killed at the clinic, and um, four patients, very similar to the um, patients that are being are being killed now, all with birthdays on Sabbath days, and one doctor. And the doctor, seen, uh, the doctor was named Clifford Fox, Clifford Cox, should I say. And he died of a drug overdose. Like, immediately it's quite clear that his death doesn't line up with the rest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there's a lot There's a lot in this part where you're like, I, I feel like it, it's classic X-Files where you suddenly put two and two together just just before um, Mulder and Scully do. Yeah, exactly. So the idea being you pretty much figure out that this Doctor is the one that caused all the things. Well, to be fair, actually, sorry to backtrack on myself, I thought that Franklin was going to be this Doctor's son or something like that. Oh, okay. And so the, I thought the operation would be you kill four patients this way and that like releases you from life or something like that, and that's how that's how he died. But they quickly find out through Mulder's very qu- quick thinking and great computer programming. They get onto the computer, they have a look at Clifford, Clifford Cox's face, and Mulder asks them to make changes. And I love this because the shots going from the screen to Mulder, from the screen to Mulder, and every time it goes back to the screen, they keep making changes to the original picture. And then it goes back to Mulder. He tells them to, t- to put the eyes apart. And it goes back, and it's a different photo. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't get it. It looks like Franklin. I was like, yeah, of course it looks like Franklin, because it was. it's a picture of Franklin. You it's just changed the picture. <laughs> very much a uh, an early version of, like, the Sims face creator. <laughs> so I'm going to make... Yeah. <laughs> it just made me laugh, because, like, the original picture of Clifford Cox... It was, they was actually changing it right up until the last moment, and then just spreading the eyes apart. It was just a completely different picture, and it was a picture of Franklin. Um, but yeah, they all comment that hang on, this looks a lot like him, and it turns out that he changed his appearance, and he goes from place to place. Basically, uh, you must have to do this every ten years, I guess. But like, he changed his appearance, and he and he and he disappeared into the night. So th- this has got where I got a bit confused and it um I'm gonna have a bit of a diss on the actor here. Ooh, I like disses. So they 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 say that basically he's doing this because he's chasing beauty and he's constantly changing to keep beautiful. Now okay, yeah. I don't want this to be a slight on the man who plays <laughs> the Doctor Franklin. <laughs> it's not all that, you know what I mean? Yeah, but don't forget, he changed 10 years ago. Yeah, he's had a tough 10 years, though, hasn't he? <laughs> he looks about 60. <laughs> well, hey, beauty is not the eye of the beholder. You can't, <laughs> you can't just... He might he might like that sort of George Clooney-esque look. Well, this beholder is saying pff, he, he got conned in that deal. <laughs> well, they, they do say that, don't they? They say that um, men age... Better than 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 women on a stereotypical basis. So maybe he's he's going for that sort of like I say, George Clooney, Brad Pitt. These are good looking guys. <laughs> That's a bold. That's a bold claim to make. What <laughs> men, men age better than women? No, apparently they do. Apparently <laughs> men grow into the looks. I know I'm getting better looking as I get older. I, so. I'm not. I'm not committing that to uh, to the airwaves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah let's swiftly move back into X-Files um, 
So now they know that they're looking for this Dr. Clifford Cox in disguise as Franklin. Um, and they start looking for him. They start searching. Eventually, Dr. Shannon finds him um, alone in a blood-spattered operating room. And um, he's laying all his tools out. And she tries to stop him. And then he teleports uh, these like, surgery tools into her stomach. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's sort because of, they they mentioned earlier on that this um, there's a like a spell that they can do that basically puts foreign objects in people's body and they cough them up yeah. and that that's what killed um, the weight earlier on. Yeah, very common in exorcisms, he says, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, she has these tools in her intestines now, which um, she gets rushed off trying to save her life. Um, as she's getting rushed off, obviously, it's Franklin that's rushing her off. So she's semi-conscious, and as she's being put under, she can see that Franklin's over top of her. Um, and she's terrified, thinking she's going to be the one that dies. Um, but she does survive, and that surprised me. We, I think everyone was expecting her to be the victim, and her head to die some way. Hmm. But um, we realised that He's he's not in that theatre. He's he's gone somewhere else, and he's he's seen removing the skin of. Oh, hang hang on! Actually, does he does he kill a fourth? Uh, somebody just, else does die. Yeah, yeah, because she she survives. Uh, who dies? What what happens to the fourth? I can't remember that. Um, and it's not in the notes here. So did it happen? Yeah, yeah. Because another no another nurse says he just went crazy, and they start stabbing someone, and they find out that her birthday is on the. 31st. Uh, oh, okay. I haven't got that. Yet. Right, it's right at the end, that is, to be fair. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, but regardless, he manages to escape, and we see one of the most chilling parts of the episode, which is him sur- using his surgery, what's it called? Scalpel. Scalpel, yeah. To remove his face. Very um, Nicolas Cage vibes here from Face Off. <laughs> And he removes the skin, and it's it's gory, but it does look great. I will I will say that it looks amazing. Yeah. And and he's performing a ritual basically to make himself appear younger, to give himself a different face. Um, and we find out that this is why he does. He's he's doing this for eternal youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you pretty much hit that. There's a shot where you see his face on the floor as well when Mulder rushes in. Yeah. It's awful, and it's like almost. I think it's like on on top of a bin or something like Mm. that. Yeah, just like his face. It's awful. Um, But again, another episode, which is like two in a row, where Mulder and Scully are too late to figure out, and they actually don't solve the case. Yeah, yeah. We we see the episode ending with Cox now young, or now in a different body, should I say? applying for another position, applying to be a, a different doctor. Now, this is where, actually, he must just be going back in time youth-wise, mustn't he? Because I think so, yeah. otherwise, he have all the credentials. Yeah, I, I don't know, yeah, yeah, because he's got a different name now. He's called Hartman, isn't he? So. Well, see, yeah, so how does he have all the experience that, like, the doctor's reading off? I don't know that. <laughs> he's got a good forgery um, person or something. <laughs> he can magic up a fake ID. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that, that's the end of the episode. What do you think? Um, I enjoyed this one quite a lot, actually. It's like it's not really deviating from the typical formula, but I thought what it did with the normal X Files formula did really well, and some of the body horror like elements of it was really, really good. It was it was like a, a good gory horror film, I suppose. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I actually I thought this was, you know, what you've hit the nail on the head for me there. It, it felt to me like your typical cheesy but not too overly cheesy horror film yeah you know what i mean and that's not a bad thing i wouldn't say it was entertaining um interesting that i don't know whether this is becoming a thing but like Mulder and scully aren't solving as many cases (laughs) they were rubbish this season i know yeah what's going on with them um but i did it was something that i picked up on i was like hang on this is everyone's getting away with it also Uh, also the the so carry on. Also, also, the level of gore that's in this series is is way way up from the last few. Well, I think to be fair, I think um, we've touched upon this a couple of episodes ago, where I, I think the budgets increased here. Mm. 
And I, I get the feeling that, that you're going to see that a lot because it does feel like they can go that extra mile with some of the effects they have. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, um, that's the end of the that's the end of um the of the rundown. Should we get to the production notes? Luke's production notes. In the 90s, the television industry uh, made wide use of spec scripts or episode scripts solicited from freelance writers. While the X-Files had a large staff of writers, the staff would occasionally have to take a risk on a teleplay written by an unaffiliated writer uh, to fill out a full-season order. Sanguinium, uh, Sanguinarium uh, was such a case being written by sis- sisters Vivian Mayhew okay. <laughs> and Valerie Mayhew. Um, this marked their first experience with writing a one-hour network program, and they would later write several episodes in the t- television series Charmed. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I, that's an interesting concept. To be fair, they've got like uh, I don't know, like mercenaries of the writing world. Basically, yeah. yeah it makes sense. You would uh, these days. I just think you wouldn't hit. You wouldn't get that. You know what I mean? Because it's just everything's so planned out, so purposeful, isn't it? Mm. Then again, saying that, um, I suppose like the new series of the Twilight Zone had like must have had separate writers, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but like, it tends to be now that like the the more hand picked. Yeah, true. I'd be very surprised if you had like mercenary writers. True, like true. you do like Game of Thrones. Every episode is directed by someone different, but it seems to be more purposeful than just sort of filling out an episode. You know what I mean? True. Yeah, I suppose if you've got twenty four episodes to fill in a series of. Difference, yeah. Um, prior to having the script picked up by the series, the sisters asked staff, uh, staff writer Glenn Morgan and James Wong for writing suggestions. Uh, Morgan and Wong told them that the scariest things are those which we repeat every day. Soon thereafter, Vivian was paged by a number she did not recognise. She realised that pages, in their own way, are scary because an unknown person can co- connect to that pages owner. What's, what's this got to do with it? <laughs> I'll continue. Um, <laughs> the Mayhews then went from focusing on pages to the group of people who normally use them, doctors. Oh. It was then that they realised the plot about doctors could losing control and being bewitched could make for a good episode. After after writing their spec script, they presented it to Morgan and Wong, who suggested they change the villain from a woman to a man, as plastic surgery is related to vanity. And everyone expects that from a woman, but not from a man. Uh, after the script was submitted, it was selected to become a full episode. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That pages thing threw me. John, from pages. Oh, you know what's scary? Pages. <laughs> I, don't under, I, don't, I don't get that. Why are they scary? Because you don't know who's texting. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, we. I, I, you could sort of say the same for phones, but I mean, I don't know. That's. I mean, yeah, it, it seems like a bit of a leap to me. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like writer's room jargon. Yeah. You know, where you just put everything on the board. There's no bad idea. Yeah. We need something. Pages. <laughs> Pages. <laughs> um, after the spec script was picked up, series creator Chris Carter and the show staff reworked it into a teleplay. Uh, Carter focused much of the plot on the themes of greed and vanity, and executive producer Howard Gordon developed several graphic scenes. Yeah, and did a really good job. Yeah. Um, After Carter had the idea of placing a subtle pentagram on the reunion table, production designer Graham... Subtle pentagram. (laughs) He drew drew it with blood. (laughs) They're, they're, they're on a, they're, I think they're on a bit they're about the table, aren't they? Like in the at the beginning. Oh, know? okay, yes. They yeah. pan up from me. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, production designer Graham Murray decided to take this further by creating rooms with five sides and having the plastic surgery units with five operating rooms representing an imaginary pentagram. Okay, yeah, that now they mentioned that that I didn't notice that because they were all like, I like, I do like that. Yeah. Um. Like previous episode Home, Fox Standard and Practice objected to the graphic content and Carter had to intervene to help retain some scenes. See, now that not baffles me, but that is interesting because 
what a hill to die on. I wouldn't say it's one. This is one of the best episodes. No, I was gonna say with home, I'd sort of you know, I'd I'd fight for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. you know you got something special there. With this one, I'm not sure whether I'd use my goodwill credits on making sure this one comes out just the way I want it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but then again, I'd say that like they sort of. The shining part of this episode is the gore scene, so maybe for if without it, it's just going to be a very boring episode. Good point. Yeah, very good point. Um, given the subject matter, the episode features many references to witchcraft and occultism. The nurse from the episode, Rebecca White, was originally named after a friend of the writers called Rebecca White. However, this was <laughs> changed because there was a real nurse from Chicago whose last name was White. <laughs> in the barrel with these. Um, some viewers ended up believing that Waite's name uh, as a reference to either Rebecca Nurse, uh, an innocent woman um, persecuted during the Salem Witch Trials, or the Rider Waite tarot deck, the most popular tarot deck utilised in the world. Um, the episode itself directly references Gerald Gardner, a Wiccan known for publishing several books on witchcraft and the founder of the Gardneri- Gardnerian tradition. Any okay. Wic- any Wiccans get involved and correct me on that one? <laughs> yeah, Mulder does reference the book quite a few times through the episode. Yeah. Um, while the Mayhew sisters try to depict occultism without offending anyone by not connecting Franklin or Waite to any known cults, many Wiccans sent angry letters and emails to Fox betraying the betrayal of their beliefs. So there you go. Maybe, okay. maybe to be weird. fair, if there's one group of people you don't want to piss off, it's Witches. Witches, yeah, yeah, that's a bad bad a bad thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm treading on their eggshells on this. I could be you next loop. <laughs> it stinks. Welcome to the critics finals. I'm gonna say I'm going to say it was a good episode. I don't think it broke any boundaries for me. Um, like you said, I think the gore shots were the highlights. I'm going to go for a 6.9. 6. Again, 9. and that's, that seems low, but it, that's still a decent score. So I, I went with 7.5, and then I've just, because as, as I mentioned last episode, I forgot to write the numbers down, so I'm just doing it on the fly as I do. I've just loaded up the number, and it is, out of 2,604 reviews, it is a 7.5. No way. So this rate is higher than last week's episode. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. That really shocks me. Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's not a bad thing. Everyone's entitled to a different opinion. Um, it's just I'm I'm surprised at how wrong they all are. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is weird because, like I said, it's don't get me wrong. This wasn't bad, but it was very cool. it was very by the numbers X Files, I suppose, but with some added gore. Whereas last week's was a bit more. I don't know. It had a bit more. Flavor and substance too, I'd say. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I this is the point where I'd usually go through a little bit of um feedback and just go through and um, can't access it this week as for the aforementioned reasons. But if you keep getting in touch with us, keep letting us know, especially now when if everyone is like us and they're stuck in the house, send us a quick email, send us a quick um tweet, let us know what you think. Um, and we will read them next time we're on. Hopefully I can get a little bit more of a sophisticated system for reading my notes for next time. Or you never know, we might be able to get back into our little home studio together. I can uh, I, I can uh, give a quick update. I've just loaded up Twitter now, so if you uh, I've I've got it's just one tweet really that we've got from, from last week's episode, if you want me to just go through that. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh Kathy mentioned that she enjoyed our take on uh on uh, on Rui. I'm gonna get that pronunciation wrong every time um she says i know how you feel about corrections so we might have to move this to a different part in the episode um i haven't made a I haven't made a jingle for that oh did i i did i made a jingle for corrections maybe i'll do that <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's play the jingle now and yeah. start again what you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things i have ever heard at no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. 
I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but the... Corrections! <laughs> oh my god, god, god. Yeah. <laughs> so Kathy got in touch with a, a correction, as she mentioned. Uh, I enjoyed your take on Honorary. I know how you feel about corrections. But this, this is something I've just discovered recently, so I'll, so I'll share. It seems like Scully is always in peril and Mulder saves her. I started tracking those details to, to see if that's true. Uh, and then basically we find um, she's gone through... Um, the stats of it, and I think it works out um, that in uh, season one, three, and four, Scully and uh, Mulder save each other the same amount of times. It's only in season two where Mulder saves Scully more often. So there you go. It's not all. Uh... I did actually have. I was having a um, bit of a conversation about that last last night, and um, I found that fascinating because it does, certainly doesn't feel that way. Um, I wonder whether that's a purposeful choice by the um, the makers of the show to make sure that not one of them is um, considered the victim, if you like. You, you would imagine they have sort of like an over, uh, like a writer's meeting when they sort of like start pitching scripts and they sort of say, okay, maybe in this episode it can involve Scully, or in this one is, is yeah. Mulder. So may, maybe they do it that way. So, I don't know. Yeah, it is fascinating. Um, I... I actually said to um, Kathy last night that I, I I was that tempted to say, "Oh, have you got the like the raw information there?" Because I'd quite like to see it. Mm. And then I realised actually that could contain a lot of spoilers. <laughs> um, maybe once we've got through a few more seasons, or maybe even the end of this season, we can try and sort of um, see if we can get like the breakdown of what happens to um, each of them. But yeah, that was fascinating. I didn't expect that myself. That's that's all the, all the tweets we had anyway. So so yeah. So um, like I said, especially. Um, if, if you've if you've stuck for something to do, feel free to tweet in um, and let us know um, what your favourite episodes are, what you think of the episodes that we're covering over the next couple of weeks. Um, but until then, um, hopefully by this point, it's got a little bit better in the world. Maybe not. We'll see. But if it hasn't, stay safe as always. Um, and if it has, we'll be back next week. Hopefully. In together, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like everything I've been watching lately has sort of been been like, yeah. So we'll be back maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna make any promises, <laughs> but we'll, if we if we can be back, we will.